Dear students, welcome to our intercultural communication course, which will be conducted by me, Amir Weiner Amanbaevna, a senior lecturer of English and German Languages Department. The theme of our first lecture is the basic notions of intercultural communication. We will consider the following questions. The first one is the concept of intercultural communication. The second is intercultural communication as a field of study. The third one, communication as a process. The fourth, communication types, direct and indirect communication. The fifth one, pragmatics of communication. And the sixth, the basic units of verbal communication. Intercultural communication as a field of study began after World War II. Several centuries ago, the world seemed small and most people only communicated with others much like themselves. The typical villager in medieval Europe seldom traveled as far as a nearby market town. There were no strangers in the village. Over the years, improved transportation brought wider travel, newer means of communication, allowed information exchange over longer distances. Today, improved technologies of communication like the Internet and more rapid means of transportation have increased the likelihood in intercultural communication. Trade and travel brought strangers into face-to-face -face contact. So did invasion, warfare and colonization. For many people, the sheer joy of learning about other cultures is sufficient reason to study intercultural communication. They are curious about how different worldviews affect communication and human understanding. People who consider their own culture as the only culture often feel that they do not need to study how others see the world. They presume that everyone sees the world pretty much as they do, or they are ethnocentric, judging other cultures as inferior to their own culture. A few people are even xenophobic, a fearing that which is foreign, strange and different. Intercultural communication may be said to occur when people of different cultural backgrounds interact, but this definition seems simplistic. To define intercultural communication, it's necessary to understand the two root words, culture and communication. Periods of studies in intercultural communication 1950s decade of beginning, 1960s decade of silence, 1970s decade of research, 1980s decade of theory, 1990s decade of debate, 2000s and beyond expanding the envelope. There are six types of communication. Cultural communication within a given culture, cross-cultural communication, comparison between one or more cultures, intercultural communication when people from two different cultures communicate with each other, co-cultural communication when people from two groups within a single dominant culture communicate, intergroup communication, communication where group identity, perceived difference, stereotypes, prejudice, is the issue and not any real differences in culture. And international communication refers to media system used around the world. Intercultural communication refers to interpersonal communication and interaction across different cultures. This has become an important issue in our age of globalization and internationalization. Effective cross-cultural communication is concerned with overcoming cultural differences across nationality, religion, borders, culture and behavior. The term cross-cultural is generally used to describe comparative studies of cultures. Culture is the basic concept of cross-cultural communication. Cross-cultural communication is a comparison of communication across cultures and it needs first listening skills. The emphasis usually lies on being a, a competent speaker. Listening is a key skill that many business personnel do not exercise enough. 
For cross-cultural communication, attentive listening is critical to be able to understand meanings, read between the lines and enable to emphasize the speaker. Speaking skills. Listening and speaking must work in tandem for effective cross-cultural communication. Speaking well is not about accent, use of grammar and vocabulary, or having the gift of the gap. Rather, cross-cultural communication is enhanced through positive speech such as encouragement, affirmation, recognition and phrasing requests clearly or expressing opinions sensitively. Observation Large amounts of cross-cultural information can be read in people's dress, body language, interaction and behavior. Be aware of differences with your own culture and try to understand the roots of behaviors, asking questions, expanding your cross-cultural knowledge. Patience People need to recognize and understand that sometimes cross-cultural differences are annoying and frustrating. In these situations, patience is definitely a virtue. Through patience, respect is won and cross-cultural understanding is enhanced. Flexibility Flexibility, adaptability and open-mindedness are the root to successful cross-cultural communication. Understanding, embracing and addressing cross-cultural differences leads to the breaking of cultural barriers, which results in better lines of communication, mutual trust and creative thinking. Following these five cross-cultural communication needs will allow us to improve lines of communication and better cross-cultural awareness and successful cross-cultural relationship. Intercultural communication is a field of study that looks at how people from different cultural backgrounds try to communicate. Cross-cultural communication as a field of study is a combination of many other scholarly fields. These fields include anthropology, psychology, linguistics, communication and cultural studies. The term culture is taken from anthropology, wherein it embraces the entire way of life of members of a community insofar as it is conditioned by that membership. Anthropologists most commonly use the term culture to refer to the universal human capacity to classify, to codify and communicate their experiences symbolically. Linguistic anthropology is a comparative study of ways in which language reflects and influences social life. Psychological applications of cross-cultural, multicultural communications work on the primes that all human beings essentially communicate on similar definable levels and these definitions can be predictable and applied to cultivate a borderless communication foundation. Linguistics is concerned largely with finding and describing the generalities and varieties both within particular languages and among all languages that are powerful means of cross-cultural communications. Ethnolinguistics or cultural linguistics is a field of linguistics which studies the relationship between language and culture and the way different ethnic groups perceive the world. Communication as a process. Communication arose and developed with the rise of men and the formation of society in the process of labor. Communication is a process whereby information is enclosed in a package, channeled and imparted by a sender to a receiver via some medium. The receiver then decodes the message and gives the sender a feedback. Communication requires that all parties have an area of communicative commonality. There are auditory means such as speech, song and tone of voice and there are non-verbal means such as body language, sign language, paralanguage, touch, eye contact, through media that is pictures, graphics and sound and writing. Communication processes of information transmission 
are governed by three levels of semiotic rules. First, syntactic, formal properties of signs and symbols. Second, pragmatic, concerned with the relations between signs and expressions and their uses. And the third is semantic, study of relationships between signs and symbols and what they represent. Communication is interactive, so an important influence on its effectiveness is our relationship with others. Communication is social interaction where at least two interacting agents share a common set of signs and common set of semiotic rules. We do most of our communicating using speech and our understanding of speech to greet people, to tell them our news, to ask and answer questions, and to use the telephone. Communication is extremely diverse in its forms. Communication is the art of transmitting information, ideas, and attitudes from one person to another, maybe verbal and nonverbal. Communication types are differentiated according to communication channels. There are means available to communicate with another person or group. They may include direct face-to-face -face communication, telecommunications, telephone, email, written communications, or indirect communication through third parties or the media, for example. Direct communication takes place when people say what they mean when the idea of saving face is not of major consequence in most situations, when silence in conversation is viewed as uncomfortable and interruptions are common. Direct communicators believe that it is better to say what needs to be said. Groups that prefer a direct style of communicating focus on the explicit meaning of words and similar to low-context cultures. Indirect communication takes place when people imply what they mean. Reading in the scenes is a definitive way of communicating, when saving face and maintaining harmony is paramount, when silence in conversation is expected and appreciated and interruptions are to be avoided. The concept of culture. Culture is a basic concept of cross-cultural communication. Culture is the integrated pattern of human knowledge, belief and behavior that depends upon man's capacity for learning and transmitting knowledge to succeeding generations. The term culture refers to all the learned and not given by nature characteristics common to a particular group of people. It is defined as way of life, especially general customs and beliefs of a particular group of people at a particular time, ideas, customs a particular society or civilization, a system of communication. There are primary cultural dimensions. First, patterns of thought, common ways of thinking, where thinking includes factual beliefs, values, norms, and emotional attitudes. Patterns of behavior, common ways of behaving, from ways of speaking to ways of conducting commerce on and the industry. Patterns of artifacts, common ways of manufacturing and using materials from pens to houses. Imprints in nature, the long-lasting imprints left by a group in the natural surroundings, where such imprints include agriculture, trash, roads, and so on. Pragmatics and the basic units of verbal communication. Pragmatics encompasses speech act theory, conversational implication, talk in interaction, and other approaches to language behavior in philosophy, sociology, and linguistics. Pragmatics explains how language users are able to overcome apparent ambiguity, since meaning relies on the manner, place, time, etc. of the utterance. The ability to understand another speaker's intended meaning called pragmatic competence. Speech act can be defined as an utterance in terms of speaker's attention and the effect it has on a listener. According to speech act theory by John Austin and John Thier, locutionary act is the act of using a referring expression, for example, a noun phrase and a predicating expression, for example, a verb phrase, 
to express a proposition. For example, you should stop smoking. The referring expression is you and the predicating expression is stop smoking. We shall also perform such an act as asking and answering questions, giving some information and assurance or warning, pronouncing sentence, making an appointment, identifying or giving a description. In conclusion, we have known that language is a complex code, broadly constructed and extensively shared that allows a group of human beings to communicate their thoughts to one another. Meanings can be changed and new symbols can be created. This is evidenced by the fact that new words invented daily and the meaning of old ones changes. This allows us to respond linguistically to major environmental, historical and social changes. Language doesn't exist apart from culture. Culture generally refers to patterns of human activity and the symbolic structures that give such activities significance and importance. Culture can be defined as all the behaviors, arts, beliefs and institutions of a population that are passed down from generation to generation. Culture has been called the way of life for entire society, as such it includes code of manners, dress, language, religion, rituals, norms of behavior such as law and morality, and system of beliefs as well as the arts and gastronomy. Culture is symbolic. The most important symbolic aspects of culture is language, using words to represent objects and ideas. Through language, humans are able to transmit culture from one generation to another. In particular, language makes it possible to learn from shared experience. Without it, one couldn't inform others about events, emotions and other experiences to which they were not a party. Language is both part of a culture as well as the medium by which culture defined and described.